we're back. Week five, update five. It doesn't look like much has changed, and that's, that's because it hasn't. Nothing really has changed. It's all stuff you can't see. Just button up the steering on the front end. Brian came over this weekend, and basically we took stuff back out and then put stuff back in the rear end. He got the mounts welded up underneath there, and they are burly. Apologies for the lack of light, um, but this is what I was talking about when we had the parts on the bench a couple weeks ago. These mounts up here used to be this way. So we cut those off and then Brian made these horizontal mounts. So now the wishbone mounts horizontally. So he was working on that and buttoning up some other stuff under here. But this stuff's pretty much ready to go. I do gotta take the bars back out because I forgot to anti-seize them and I wanna finish painting the frame. Um, I got the outers of the frame painted, but I need to finish inside still. So that stuff got done and then I start working on my coil mounts, which are actually pretty sweet. So the coil mounts used to be, they used to be up here on the down bar and these huge plug wires to reach all the way over and they looked ugly and they were gross and I just didn't like them. So I found these from ICT billet, put them down on the block and I don't have anything in this area. It's like wide open in the car. They land right about here and right about here, just kind of a nothingness. So I think this gonna work out a lot better. And then I can also go to shorter plug wire too. I was hoping down here I could get away with stock length, but you can tell that they're not even close to using stock length. But either way, they'll be shorter, they'll be less out of the way, can't get caught on stuff. It'll be a lot better overall. But that's not what this video is about. This video is about three years ago when I built the car. I bought a secondhand Holly HP. Got a real good deal on it until I could afford it at the time. Every other car I've ever worked on for anyone has a dominator, and I always wanted a dominator, but I couldn't afford one. So all I've ever had is this crusty old HP, uh, but it works pretty good. And then you can see up there, I used the solid state from MSD instead of like the normal nitrous driver on the bump. However, that's, I think, the root of my problems lately where the car bumps through on its own. So the question comes in, how do we get a Holley Dominator without buying a Holley Dominator? That's, that's where this comes in. In this box, we have the new Holley CAN Input Output Module. 554-165. So, well, that's a nice surprise. I didn't, I didn't even know it came with wire, to be honest. So that's, that's handy, wire and pins and the whole nine yards. So this is something I think me and everyone else always thought should be an option. And that's to basically expand your the amount of inputs and outputs you have. So like right now, I have an HP. You get four ins, four outs, same as a Terminator, four inputs, four outputs, a Dominator. I don't remember off the top of my head. It's got a million. You get a million inputs and outputs. Well, somebody like me, I just need a few more. So I used up everything I already have. So like now we added the rear wheel speed. We're going to add front wheel speed. Um, we'll probably do some more inputs, maybe shock sensors, things like that. Okay, so the first thing on that main harness that plugs into it, the only harness that plugs into it, coming off of it, is the USB splitter. So mine is conveniently located up here, just behind my dash. So I already unplugged it. This is for my Terminator dash that I run, the three and a half inch. So this lead over here is coming off my main harness. And that's just going to tee right into the middle of them. So you don't need a split or anything crazy like that. And the other lead coming off the main harness is just a ground. Oh, some more light. There you go. It's just a ground. Um, it's used for all the sensor grounds in the box. At least that's my understanding. So when you look at this, you've got the canned stuff that we just plugged in. And then you've got these four grounds that come off into one 10 gauge ground right here. 12 gauge, I should say. And that is just going to go right to the chassis ground. And then Holly is nice enough to even provide the ring terminal for the ground. And per the instructions, it says tie to a good grounding point, such as the battery. It's always best to take them straight to the battery. I'm not gonna do that right now because we're just doing this for instant gratification. And then underneath my dash, I have a, a large grounding strip. And I'm just gonna hook that right to that grounding strip. And that grounding strip, has a cable that runs the back of the car, like a four gauge cable. Okay, so at this point, I hooked up the two things you have to hook up. It's, it's like the easiest install ever. 
you plug in the can, you hook up the ground, and here we are. Done. Okay, so just be fair, because I don't want to skip any steps, because every time I watch a YouTube video, they skip a step and they say, well, you probably have V6 already. So this nifty little box needs V6. So if you're like me and you're on V5 or four or three or two or whatever, whatever it is that you're clinging on to, you're gonna need V6 for this. So if you go on Holly's website and you go to EFI software, you scroll down, the first thing you're gonna see up here is Holly EFI V6 software, and you want the complete file set. So it'll automatically pop up once you have it. Download it, and you go to V6, you can do it however you want, extract, go back into it, go to set up, and this pops up and now, now, now you've got to decide. I'm, I'm not an IT guy, I just hit run on everything and just keep hitting next until we get to where we wanna be. Oh no, I do want, I do want the, I want the shortcut. And just keep hitting next, install, next, automatic, done. And as soon as the application's done, it just bam, pops right up, pulls you right in here. So now we've got Holly V6. And as far as getting your tune from five to six, it's pretty straightforward. Just go in here and open up your tune. So once you pick it, it's gonna give you this notice every time. Blah, 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 sounds good. Now we, so now we have the old tune in V6. Okay, this is where things get real greasy. Um, I'm hooked up to the car, ignition on. You can see that if I try to connect, it's gonna give me this warning. Um, that 6.0 build 110 is what I need, and I'm on 5.0. It's talking about the ECU itself, so it needs to be updated. So if you try to connect or sync this thing, it's just not going to happen. So if you go under the little circles here, the little circle arrows, this is where all the, this is the important stuff, you know. TPS auto sets, password. I have a password on mine. It's SBE. I don't want anybody to get in there and get the tune. So anyhow, uh, upgrade firmware. Now, this is where it's going to give you all these warnings. This is where you hear all the horror stories about all the stuff that can go wrong. And all of those things are true. You should not be doing anything I'm doing right now, but I, I basically just YOLO my way through this every single time. Uh, yep, that's what I want. Yep, okay. Done. Don't touch the car. Just sitting here waiting for this to update. Update the firmware on my ECU. And I was thinking back to when we were in Thunder Valley. I got there and I realized that Steven had made some changes in the tune on his version, which was not my version. So I had to do this at Thunder Valley and I remember standing here just overwhelmed, felt like it took three hours. It takes probably a good half hour. It was like the longest half hour of my life waiting to make that first pass. And I was just thinking that whole time I could have crawled under the car, double checked everything and probably found something broken. Just like that, you get, you get the best message you could ever get when you do something like this. Update was successful. Okay, so we're just gonna do like a little simulation here. So I've got a little LED strip line on my computer. We're gonna pretend like these are our reverse lights. And then we're gonna use an existing input that I already had going into the ECU itself for the trans brake to turn them on. So all I did is jump in the input output configuration here. So we're just gonna make an output for these. I'm just gonna call it reverse lights. Gonna enable it. And then we're gonna do a can ground. You can obviously pick whatever is applicable for what you've got wired. Uh, these lights I've got 12 to them, like we'll call it like a switch 12 volts. So now we just need the, we just need the holly when I press the trans brake button to give it a ground to light it up. So in our configuration, I've got one switched input, which is the trans brake. When it's enabled, we'll turn this output on. In the upper right here, this is where, you, this, is where this differs a hair from a dominator. You can go to can. And then we have to put our serial number in, which is on the back of the box. Hertz is how quickly it sends information back and forth to the ECU. So something super trivial like this, I think one Hertz is fine. If it was something like a timing retard or something wild like that, that we need instant feedback, it'd probably be like 100 Hertz, your max. Can device is going to be can input output module. It's your only option. We're going to use output number one for this. And can bus, it's going to be can bus number one. Okay, so that should be all set up. So I'm just gonna link this to the car with the changes. You can see the only thing that failed is input outputs because that's all that I changed from the tune. Send it to the ECU. So now I just did a quick cycle of ignition. Hop back on here for fun. 
and we're live. So the last thing we need to do is we just need to pin our output, which I have right here, into our CAN bus module. So if we look at the directions that came with it, we wired it to output number one, which is pin one, two, three. So, so unplug it. And then if you look on the back of here, they got the numbers in all the corners. So pin one, two, three is open. On these, you just press the white tab. Two on the top pop open. And that means the receptacle is ready to receive. So we'll take our output. Slide it in number three. I just like to flip it over and just make sure it's in all the way. So you can see it's at the end of the pin there, so it's in all the way. And then just push these two tabs back down. We're locked and loaded. Plug this back in. Should be ready. That's our official mount up there. Okay, so it's all set up. I'm reaching there, I'm hit the trans brake. And this thing should turn on at probably a low rate of speed because we got one hertz selected. So you're probably you're gonna hear the trans rate come on, and there's probably gonna be a delay. There they are, reverse lights. Overall, this is not this is not meant to be like a how to wire your car video, um, but I mainly just wanted to prove what we knew. I assumed Holly wasn't lying, but I just wanted to see the car use an existing input going into the ECU via CAN bus to trigger something coming out. So I think this is gonna work pretty good. Um, like I said, I'm probably gonna use it for wheel speed in the rear, wheel speed in the front. Uh, there's two speed inputs on this thing. And then we'll use it for an output, like I don't have a shift light. Um, if one of my arms falls off and I need to go to an air shifter, because that's the only reason I can think for an air shifter, I could turn that on. Maybe I could put a data log button on the back of the car, because um, I, don't, I don't know, there's, some people don't like to use the trigger built in. Um, you gotta trust your buddy, then trust the NASA computer in your car. Reverse lights, you know. Uh, maybe maybe I'll wire maybe I'll wire my new LED headlights to start flashing like a strobe as soon as the scramble button comes on. But I don't have a scramble button because it's just always all in there. Either way, you get the point. It's pretty sweet. Retail is three hundred fifty bucks. So a Dominator is like I don't know. I'm shooting from the hip here. Twenty two hundred bucks. And HP is like 1200 bucks. So 1500 versus 22. About two and a half of these plus an HP gets you to a dominator. So a dominator has 50 inputs. This gives you an extra eight. So if you're like me, you only need a few more, it's a sweet deal. If you're like, nah, man, I need 50, then don't buy it. It's not gonna work for you. But if you're limping by on a budget and you just need something to get by, this is the ticket. But aside from that, I'll get that final installed. Um, obviously we just threw it together real quick. Uh, so you could see it. The video won't be much fun if I finally install that thing under the dash and all you see is me wiggling around and they're trying to pin stuff in. So I'll button that up, button the rear end up, button front up. I'm hoping the next time I watch a video, the front clip and the motor's all back in the car. Stand by.